everybody welcome back to simple art for adults my name is Erin and this is our Sunday fun day color and chat if I can figure everything out here uh, for me it's actually just about it's a little bit before noon on Saturday but I do want to go ahead and get this recorded and edited and everything and then we'll get it up late tonight so you guys have all day Sunday to watch whenever you have time rather than waiting until Sunday night this is actually my second attempt at recording this for whatever reason my camera keeps deciding it doesn't want to record anymore so if it happens again then I'm just gonna restart my computer and see if I can't fix it somehow um, so far today's been a pain day for me um, and I know a lot of you guys deal with chronic pain and whatnot I really don't I don't consider um, what I have to be chronic pain but I'll get into that a little bit more later I'm just I, today's not been a really good day for me I'm ready to sit down and color for a while and so I figured now is a really good time for me to record the color and chat I've got three works in progress. I'll show them all to you. This is the one, of course, that I started during my Black Widow and Scorpion colored pencil review, and these are the colors I was using. This is from Jade Summers' uh, Unicorn Coloring Book, and it's just a gorgeous book. I love it. Then there's this one, which is by Deborah Muller. This is the Make Waves image, or that's what it was named online. I don't know if it really is the name of the picture. Um, Beth Wood in my Facebook group, she's one of my admins, and I, we are doing this as part of our discomfort zone challenge. The art isn't what makes me uncomfortable, the art's adorable, it's the neon colors that I'm using in the art. Um, and this picture suits the neon colors really well, so I'm kind of excited. Now that I've gotten started, I'm kind of excited to see how it's going to turn out. So there's that one. And then I'm also working on this one out of Twilight Garden. And I've been really all about the teal colors lately, so I started out with the teal leaves, and then I added in the flowers, and now I'm going to do some burnt orange elsewhere in the picture, so it'll be a split complementary color scheme. Um, and I thought the colors worked really well together, so I'm very excited about that as well. So I wasn't sure what I wanted to work on during the color and chat. Um, the one that's really sticking out to me the most, though, is this one. So I think we're going to work on the unicorns one. And we're doing it in the Black Widow and Scorpion pencils. So here is the color chart for that. Um, and my pencils are back here, and I'm trying to decide what color to make things. There's going to be a whole lot of blue in here. So I think I want to do orange somewhere. Alright, well let's make the horse's bow orange. And as far as oranges go... I think I'm going to go with four for my lightest color. And then we'll just do four and six. I've really been enjoying these pencils. They've been a whole lot of fun to work with. So let me zoom you guys in so you can see. So as far as today being a pain day for me, what I mean by that is, um, I said it in my last video too, back in 2006 I was in a car accident. I was driving down the highway at 55 miles an hour minding my own business, um, and someone um, in a little tiny car pulled out in front of me and I had zero time to react and I just smashed right into their back end. Um, they pulled out in front of me, according to witnesses, they pulled out in front of me and then stopped. Like, stopped dead. So I don't know whether their car died. I don't know whether they, um, you know, did it on purpose. Like, they pulled out and then realized that they weren't where they thought they were going. But they pulled out in front of me uh, so short that I had no time to do anything. So the whole front end of my car was crumpled. Um, my left leg got trapped between the steering column and the door. And because the front end had been pushed back so far, I couldn't get the door open. So it took a good two hours or so for them to get the door off the car. And they had to come with the jaws of life and cut the door off because they couldn't get it off otherwise. That took a good two hours. And um, come to find out that my kneecap had been dislocated. So it, like my kneecap was literally off to the side. And I'm sorry if that you know, bothers any of you, but that's, that is what happened. Um, and I had torn ligaments and things of that nature happening as well. Uh, fortunately, no broken bones, no, you know, nasty, nasty injuries or anything like that. 
So that is very, very fortunate. Um, and I'm also sniffly, guys. I apologize. I'm going to try not to sniffle through the whole video. Um, and so, you know, I had to wear a cast around my knee or like a hard brace, I guess you could call it, around my knee. And I had to walk on crutches. Well, I had a wheelchair for the first couple weeks. And then I had to walk on crutches for like another six weeks before I could finally um, use that leg. And then I went through years, of, not, not years, months of physical therapy. Um just to be able to walk normally again after that because it really did mess stuff up in my leg um so ever since then i have not had chronic pain i wouldn't necessarily call it chronic pain um what i have is i have days where that knee will ache very 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 badly um to the point that it i almost can't put pressure on it um, and today is one of those days. It, today it is really, really bad. Um, it woke me up last night as I was trying to sleep. Um, so I was up at 4.30 this morning. I'm sure some of you guys in the Facebook group noticed that I was up as a crack of dawn today. Um, and that's just because I was in pain and couldn't, um, couldn't get back to sleep. So, I got up and browsed through, um, the comments on YouTube and there's so many people entering the giveaway so I'm glad I have that you know Albert's agreed to give away six sets of the pencils because that kind of gives you guys better odds um, I did receive a comment about the moderators and admins in my group joining in on the giveaway I do just want to say guys that um, I'm like one of the most honest people that you're ever ever going to meet in your entire life um, nobody, including my admins or moderators, is going to get any favoritism. It's all going to be 100% and completely random. Um, so whoever's names pop up, if you subscribe to my channel and if you're on my Facebook, um, yeah, if you're on my Facebook group, then you win, period. Whether you're, uh, you, you, if you just joined the group yesterday or whether you're, you know, one of my admins, doesn't matter. Everybody has the same chance to win. So you don't need to worry about that. Um, I've also been asked um, what's going to happen because a lot of people, their name on their on the Facebook group or their username on YouTube is different from the name they use on the Facebook group. So that's also been a concern. And then for that, I just want to let you guys know that I'm going to announce it in both places using the YouTube name. So if you see your name or hear your name in the video, because there's going to be a video announcement too, then all you have to do is just send me a private message on Facebook through the Facebook group um, and we'll get you all set up. I just don't, uh, the reason we're doing it this way is because we're going to need your email address um, and I don't want you to put that information out in public, obviously. So um, the only way to really contact you then is going to be through uh, face Facebook Messenger is a safe way, or at least I think so. So that's the way that we've chosen to do it. I know this looks terrible right now. Like I said, I'm having a off day today. So my coloring may not even be the best today. Like it's just for fun though, guys. This isn't I'm not I'm not interest interested in making a masterpiece today. It's just to take my mind off things. So we had our first little snow of the season this morning. It dusted the ground and then melted away already. It's supposed to get up to like 37 degrees today, so I knew it wouldn't stick around long. Hope I'm not getting my son's cold. That would not be a good thing. Alright, I'm going to pause the video and go get a tissue and I will return. Alright everybody, I have gotten my tissue and I should be all set now, at least for a little while. I may have to go do it again here shortly. I don't know if I'm having some kind of an allergic reaction to something, or if I'm really getting my son's cold, which would be a horrible considering I just got over having something like that. But, that's life. So, <laughs> whichever way it goes, right? So, how many of you guys are actually going to do the discomfort zone challenge that we're having in the Facebook group? I'm kind of curious because I thought it was going to be fun. And I know that for some people, they're like, you know, 
they really do have anxiety about certain things and they you know it really does drive them crazy and so um, I don't that's not my intention so you know if I'm asking you to do something that makes you uncomfortable to the point that it's gonna give you anxiety please don't do it I don't I don't want that you know it's supposed to be light-hearted like I said with Beth and I neither one of us are big fans of neon colors so that's what we chose to do we just thought it would be fun to step outside what we would normally do and um, see what we could create with something that we normally wouldn't use so you know we thought it would be fun to ask you guys to do the same it's you know you don't have to participate um, well lots of people are too pressed for time to participate as a matter of fact so don't feel bad if the same applies to you or if it just doesn't appeal to you that's fine too no biggie oh I want my red let me go back in here and make this red just a little darker and then I want to make this just a little darker as well Now, I printed this out on rather smooth cardstock, and these pencils, I'm still layering. Still. I am giving it some harder pressure now, though, because it's gotten to the point almost where it doesn't want to take anymore. Alright, now I'm just going to try to blend everything out as best I can. I'm going to put some red there, too. It's not exactly how I saw it in my head, but it's alright. I don't mind. Oh, here's the red. I'm going to tuck some red back in here. There we go. Alright, I think I'm going to do her dress in the same colors because I think it'll look nice. So I'm going to start with my light layers of the yellow. So what have you guys all been working on lately? Are you guys all coloring? Are you um, kind of pressed for time, don't have the time to color right now, working on stuff for the holidays? I know a lot of you guys are busy making Christmas cards and uh, decorating, things of that nature. Um, unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to have time to make Christmas cards this year. I've tried to have time several times and it just doesn't work out for me. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to like start making them um, all year round in 2018. I'm just going to take the stamps and the dies and the fabrics and whatnot that I have and start just cutting some shapes and stamping some cards and doing some embossing. And I don't necessarily have to put them all together, but I can get started and make, you know, like my bits and pieces and whatnot. So I think that's what I'm going to end up doing. So I'm going to do this like the camera is like right here taking a picture of them so the light source is going to be up above. Well not up above, up above would be up here so it's going to be like dead center on them like someone's using their camera to take a picture and the flash went off. That's the easiest way when you're new to trying to do shadows and things I think that's the easiest way. So it is really cold out today, and I think that might be why my why I'm having so much pain. Um, it dropped off rather quickly and got pretty cold, so that's my best guess. Because, like I said, normally 
I mean, I have days where I'll like have some aches and pains in it, but not like, not like last night and not like today, so. And I'm taking anti-inflammatories like at the highest possible dose, hoping maybe that will help. Yes, I am coloring the whole dress in yellow to start, the whole thing. So my son is still coughing. He doesn't have a fever though, which is a good thing because my, um, my son's in eighth grade and my daughter's a sophomore and they both uh, have their winter formal dance tonight. So I was afraid he was going to get sick and not be able to go. And he's coughing, but he's not, he doesn't have a fever. So he's not like sick, sick. So he is going to go. You guys will probably notice I'm not doing small. Oh, you're not noticing anything because I'm out of frame. I'm not doing small circles this time because really for the first, the light layer, it doesn't really matter. You're going to end up going back over everything anyway. Now on a toothier paper with a different pencil, then you may need to worry. You may need to be a little more careful. Get the horse's little leg wrap thingy. all this hair in this picture and I'm gonna have to make their hair different colors so I think I'm going to make I think they're both going to have brown hair and it's going to be a brown horse I don't know about I don't know see maybe a brown horse with blonde hair and she can have brown hair just different just different browns Alright everybody, I'm very sorry about that. Um, my phone just suddenly decided to stop recording again. When I do this, I project the screen to my computer monitor in front of me so I can make sure that what I'm doing is in the frame for you guys to see. And for it works well 99% of the time, but then there are times when um, it just decides to stop. Like it'll just decide it doesn't want to work anymore. And not only does it stop projecting my screen, but it stops recording too. So I don't know why that is. Um, but hopefully, because I've restarted everything now, I restarted the computer and I restarted the phone. So hopefully that'll solve the problem. It usually does. I don't know what I was talking about or how far into it I'd gotten, but we'll find something else to talk about, I'm sure. I really am enjoying these pencils, so they're very nice. And I really like this pale yellow. It's so cold outside today. Oh, I don't like the cold. It's one of those times of year where you think every morning when you wake up, uh, you know, we're just one more, one more day closer to spring. One more day. Spring will be here soon. I'll tell people I just really don't like winter. And so the response that I get a lot is, well, what about having a white Christmas? Personally, I wouldn't care. I'd, I'd move to Florida or something and have a palm tree for my Christmas tree for all I care. <laughs> I just don't like the cold. The cold makes me grouchy. The cold makes me like it triggers depression. It's just I don't like it. It's 
So again, my bottom layer is quite messy. I really don't mind too much, that's okay with me. And like I said, this is just getting the base color down. And there will be more layers, so. Whatever pencil lines you're seeing right now should be covered up by the time we're finished. And if not, then I guess I've learned my lesson about using these pencils on this paper and <laughs> not being careful. Okay, so the yellow is all down. I'm going to go back with uh, the orange color. I just want to leave my yellow highlight there in the middle. I gotta be careful because even with the lightest hand these pencils put down a lot of pigment okay. now I'm gonna take my red and we're gonna get the very edges so if you guys haven't seen my review of these pencils you can find it um, in my playlist on my channel I did a pretty in-depth review of them um, showed how they blend, layer, all the different colors. You can see some of them here beside me. So I had to go to the grocery store today because I keep forgetting to pull things out of my deep freezer to thaw out to feed everybody. <laughs> and I honestly, with the way I'm feeling today, I'm not going to feel like cooking anything anyway. So I just went the frozen pizza route. My kids love frozen pizza, and I don't feel bad feeding it to them, so, <laughs> especially not today. When I don't feel good, it's just like, whatever, anything goes. Yeah, that's what I wanted. That's nice. Alright, so now I'm going to take the orange and I'm going to go in where the little fabric, the areas where the fabric is gathered. I'm going to put some just along the edges, kind of lightly as an outline. And because the light shining from the front, there's going to be a little bit of a shadow behind her chest. And there may be just a little bit of shadow under her chest. Again, I'm just using a light, light, light layer. You guys have seen me color enough times at this point that you pretty well know what I'm doing. I'm just trying to put my colors down so I can make sure they're in the right place and I like the way they look. And then once I do that... Um, I'll feel more comfortable about going in with the heavier layers. And this is inside the sleeve, so I do want to make some of this just a little bit darker. Alright. And then I think for the edges, like for this, I'm going to make the whole thing the orange. Let me just leave like a little strip there for some lighter yellow, just a tiny bit. And then the same up here, we'll make this orange. I'm going to leave a little, well, I was going to leave a highlight, but there's going to be shadow, uh, it'll be shadow here where it's tucked behind this. And then there's also going to be a tiny little bit of shadow where her hair is. So there's not really a lot of sense in doing that. some shadow here where the bottom part of her or the top part of her dress tucks down into the bottom it looks like so 
such a dreary, dreary Saturday. It's a good day to take a nap, and I very well might. Go crawl in bed, turn the electric blanket on, catch up on all the YouTube videos I haven't gotten a chance to watch yet. Actually sounds like a pretty good time to me. I mean, I'm going to take my red. I'm just going to emphasize all the shadows a little bit. I don't want too much of it. There we go. A little bit here. And actually, there needs to be a little bit back here as well. Just a tiny bit. There we go. That's better. And we'll put just a thin line here. And for the red, I'm going to follow the artist's, um, the way the artist drew it. For the red, there we go. Oh, let me put some red up here too. And then just a smidge because this will be pulled in a little bit with that clip being there. some red because her hair will also cast a little bit of a shadow. All right, now I'm going to take my orange and go ahead and finish this up. Let's see if I blended that out enough to where I can get the yellow in without there being a line there. not too bad. Go ahead and put the yellow back in up here. Actually, I should have brought in just a little bit of this orange down here as well. Not much. And then some of the red. pretty good. I like those colors together. I'm going to darken up the shadow down along her elbow a little. And then again with the red. This is basically just going to be like an outline here. a little bit so I can get a clean blend and sniffly again this is not fair I'm liking these colors actually. I like the way they work together. I'm going to go grab a tissue again and I shall return. Alright everybody, I'm really sorry about that. Um, I did realize I said I would was going to go get a tissue and come back, but what really happened is I went to go take a nap for about four hours. <laughs> um, I do feel better now though. I think maybe my body was just trying to tell me I was exhausted and needed to sleep. 
um, cause I, I do feel better, um, oddly enough. So not quite as much pain as I was in before. I feel a little bit more rested now. So hopefully we'll get some coloring in. Um, it is 5.50 p.m. Central Time, so I have uh, Jen from Reading with Pugs. She's on in the background doing her cozy coloring night. Uh, I was listening to her tell the story of how Emilio's, <laughs> Emilio's name came to be, which was, it was funny. Um, but unfortunately, I am kind of working with some time constraints tonight. I have things I have to do tonight, so I have to get this recorded. Um... So she's still on in the background, so I can uh, see if I can semi-sort of pay attention while I record my Sunday fun day and color my, color my Jade Summer picture. We'll see what happens. I don't know whether the camera will pick her up or not. It might. <laughs> so I'm still just adding the colors to her, the fabric of her dress. And I'm hoping that all of this makes sense. I don't cover, I don't color, cover, I don't color fabric often. So I'm really hoping that all of this ends up making sense at the end. I'm trying to make each little piece a little bit distinct so you know what it is, but like I said, this isn't something I do much, so... my darker orange. My dogs are in the room with me too, so they hear me talking and they're probably going to go try to get into stuff and they're probably going to bark at each other because that's just what they do. They're usually in here asleep, but if they hear me talking then then they think I'm like doing something without them, I think. Or they'll both go to the water bowl and start lapping the water out of the bowl. And they, they're like 45 pound, 45, 50 pound dogs. So when they drink water, it's not a quiet, it's not a quiet thing. They're rather loud about it. Okay. So I do want to put like a little bit more orange over this way, I think. I'm going to add some just around her side here. Hopefully it's going to give the illusion that um, her body is like three-dimensional and not just like a flat image on the page. People aren't my thing. I don't color a lot of people. I color flowers and leaves and I can color houses and buildings and things okay, I think. I don't do a lot of people. I have a uh, mascara, the Mardell Rubio book that was a gift from Loretta, and it's, you know, probably one of my most favorite coloring books ever, and I, I haven't even touched it yet, just because I'm, <laughs> I'm terrified I won't be able to do it justice, and I know that seems really silly, but um, it is what it is. I'm going to add a little bit of shadowing here as well. Again, I do want it to look a little three-dimensional and not just flat on the page. But that shadowing is going to be very light. So anyway, eventually I feel... I'm doing things like this because I think eventually I will get get that book out. And um, Jasmine Beckett Griffith's Halloween, and I started a page in it, and, with, and I tried to do skin with the polychromals, and it... It didn't work out very well. Um, I'm going to force myself to finish it anyway, even though I don't like the way the skin turned out. I will finish it eventually. Um, but that's a book that I'm going to order again. Because I don't, if I don't like the way something is turning out, I don't let it like ruin my experience. I don't let it get me down too much. Um, I'll just buy the book again at some point. When I feel like I've got skin tones mastered, um, I'll just buy another copy of the book, and then what I'll do is, is I'll use one copy for practice, or I'll, you know, let my daughters color in one alongside me, and I'll color in the other. Or I'll just color the image twice. And I'm not a big fan of printing everything. Um, 
I'll buy PDF books on occasion if they're printed on CreateSpace paper and I have the option to buy them. If I have the option to buy them as PDFs, I will a lot of the time. A lot of the time I won't though, because to be completely fair with you, I mean, we're on a budget. A lot of us are on coloring budgets. Um, I have to weigh what I want against what I can really afford. Um, right now, I'm trying my hardest to save some money to buy the the Karen Dosh Pablo pencils. Those are, you know, the one thing that I want more than anything else in the world. And I wanted the polychromos, don't get me wrong. And I'm very happy I have them, um, but they are not the Pablo. <laughs> And I really want to have the Pablos at some point. So, um, yeah. Add a little shading here as well. Because otherwise I feel like her chest is going to be glowing like a lemon and we don't want that. <laughs> and this is just light shading at this, at this point. I've got heavier shading happening here. And I've got lighter shading happening up here. And there's a reason for that. I hope. I hope it works out. Alright. Let me zoom in a little. Guys, it is freezing cold outside. And I don't remember because I, I've slept since then, quite literally. I don't remember if I said earlier in this video everything I had to do tonight. Um, my boyfriend is working. And he won't be finished working until later on tonight. He says 9 o'clock. Um, he works in Owensboro, so I have to go to Owensboro to pick him up, which is no big deal. It's only like half an hour away. A lot of people, you know, have to drive a lot further, so I don't complain. And then, um, my kids have their winter, winter formal dance tonight, and I have to have them there at 7.30, and I have to be back to pick them up at 10.30. So we're cutting it really close. Guys, I have no idea what's happening with my phone. Um, I've never ever had this much problem with it. It just keeps shutting, it keeps shutting down the, uh, the camera. It's not getting hot. It's not, um, I don't know what it's doing. I can't figure it out. Normally, once I restart everything and reconnect everything freshly, it stops doing that. So I am at a complete loss as to what is happening. I don't know. Uh, this video is going to be broken into four, five, six minute chunks all the way through. I guess that's just a testament to life though, isn't it? How busy we are and how things don't really ever go as planned. <laughs> so anyway, as I was saying, my boyfriend was supposed to get off work tonight at 8. Um, so that would give me time to get there, pick him up, and then be back here by 8.30. So I could come in, sit down, do some coloring, have a nice cup of mocha or something before I had to go pick the kids up from their dance. And that's not going to happen now because he, he's not going to be getting off work until 9, which means I'm going to have to I'll be getting home between, sometime between 9.30 and 10, depending on traffic. And I'll have, like, no time to sit down and have some coffee. Um, I'm thinking of... I'm going to like Starbucks or Dunkin Donuts or something before I come home and tell him he has to buy me coffee now <laughs> because I'm not going to have time to come home and make my own. I'm a fan of the uh I'm a fan of the fancy Keurig coffees. I love them. Like in the mornings when I wake up, I just drink regular coffee. I think I drink Folgers is my coffee of choice when I wake up in the morning. Because I'm strange that when I first wake up in the morning, I don't like cream, I don't like sugar, I don't like anything. I just want plain, strong, black coffee. And I usually have two cups every morning, or one big cup, depending on which cup I get. So I usually have two cups every morning. And then I reserve my, um flavor coffees like my mochas and whatnot I have those in the evening times or like if I have to stay up late at night to drive people around and do things because you know I am the chauffeur of the family then I will um, have my flavored coffees and that's when I really enjoy having them so I have I forget what it is that I have right now that I'm really liking 
comes in a brown box. I think it's called Cafe Escapes or something. And I have one that's mocha and one that's caramel. And it's so good. And I love it. And I also have apple cider that you can make in the Keurig, which is delicious. I had some of that last night. So if it's like really late and I'm getting ready to go to bed, but and I don't want anything with caffeine in it, then I can make that. I also have some... I have like boxes of this stuff, guys, that I keep. I also have some um, hazelnut decaf. I have some crumble donut flavored coffee that's really good. I need to go raid the coffee aisles at Meyer again because I have a coupon for like $5 off when I buy two of the 10 packs of tea cups or something. Which is actually a pretty good deal because you can combine those coupons. When Meyer has sales, you can combine the coupons. So I need to go back and go shopping and get some more coffees. Actually, I need to drink some of the ones I already have first, <laughs> but I will. So I guess you could say that my two biggest loves are um, coloring and coloring supplies and coffee. Trying to add some shading here to her sleeve without. What do you guys think so far? Do you like her dress? The oranges? That, are they matching the uh, the blue behind the unicorn at all? I'm trying to convince myself I need to do her skin too, but like I said, I'm working with limited time tonight, guys, so I didn't want to dive into some huge project. And since I'd already started this, I just figured, you know what, we'll work on this for a while. And there goes the dog in the water bowl. I knew it was going to happen. If he gets loud, I'll make him stop until I'm done. Nope, he's not going to get loud. He just wanted a small drink. So for any of you guys who are watching also um, animal lovers for parents, we have dogs and a guinea pig. We have two dogs. I say this all the time, but for the, those of you who might be new to the channel, well, my dog's names are Smokey and Bandit. Um, Smokey's a blue healer. Bandit is a Walker Coonhound with a... He's, he looks like Walker Coonhound, but his mom's a Mountain Feist, so his mom's a, like a smaller dog. Um, but he is about 45 pounds, so he took more after the mountain fight or the Walker Coonhound side of things. Now, full blood Walker Coonhound is bigger than he is. Um, not a whole lot bigger than he is, but still bigger than he is. So you can tell it. Um, and you can definitely tell he's a hound when he barks. He's got a he's got a hound's bark. You can't miss it. And then Smokey is my blue healer, uh, who is, I think it's. An Australian cattle dog is another name for a blue healer, I think. Um, he doesn't bark real often. Uh, but when he does, he's got that like real sharp, shrill bark that like pierces your ears and makes your toes curl. So, there's that also. It's really, um, it's really something else. So guys, like I always do, um, when I make this video uh, go live on YouTube, and I'm probably going to get it up here in just a little bit, I'm going to schedule it to post, um, I'm thinking early, early Sunday morning. I'm going to go ahead and get it uploaded and everything, of course, but it won't, it won't go public until early in the morning. Um, I'm going to include a list of all the things that you see me use here. So I'm going to put downstairs in the description box, Amazon links to Jade Summer Unicorn, the black scorpion and the widow pencils, or the black widow and the scorpion pencils. I'm falling all over my words today. My little electric eraser, everything that you see me use, because I know that when I first started out coloring, um, and even when I wasn't new to coloring anymore, that's where I got a lot of the ideas, and that's where some of my best things came from. I would have never bought an electric eraser if I hadn't seen somebody use one on YouTube. And it's by far one of the best investments I ever made. For seven bucks, you get the eraser, like 20 refills. I mean, and I've only been through two of the refills in six months. 
So, you know, for seven bucks, it's worth it. It erases better than anything else. So, I, like I always do, I'll put the links in the description box in case you guys are interested. Um, I am an Amazon affiliate, so I do get a small percentage of every sale um, as a commission of sorts. So, if you order through those links, you are supporting the channel indirectly, even though you'd probably be buying it anyway. Um, I do want to thank you for doing it through my links and helping support the channel. All right, so there is that. Now we just have the dress to do. And I don't know if I'm going to get it all finished, but I'm certainly going to try. This is the part that really eludes me. I'm not sure how this works. Now, I can tell that there's a pleat and that this part of the fabric is folded over this part of the fabric. So I am going to go in very, very lightly with this color. And I'm going to add a shadow there. Can you guys hear Jen talking in the background? I'm trying to listen to her while I color. She's coloring in a Fairy Merry Christmas by Deborah Muller, guys. She's using her whole body pencils and coloring. It looks like a hot cocoa mug or a coffee mug or something that's got like a... I'm going to say it's hot cocoa because there's a candy cane poking out of the top of it. And it looks so nice. It's like, I mean, girl, I'm sitting here talking about coffee and you're over there coloring hot chocolate. I'm going to have to make some hot chocolate. And if there hadn't been already like 15 breaks in this video, I would like turn the camera off right now and go make some. <laughs> but there's already been so many like unwanted breaks in the video that I'm not turning the camera off again. So it is what it is. I'll just have to wait. They didn't have any diet. I, I normally drink um, Coke Zero, right? That's my favorite drink. But I'm like, I'm frugal. And I get, I don't buy brand name soda unless it's on sale. Um, and so I like check all the stores around me for soda before I'll go and buy, I'll, and buy soda. And I'll buy it where it's on sale. Um, and I, you know, it's something that I try to tell everybody they should do it's like guys if you only buy stuff when it's on sale then these places will lower their prices on things um and that's just the way it works that's the way the economy works it helps to tell our people you know what what we're willing to pay for things and so you know they may end up lowering their prices not to where not to sale prices of course but they might end up lowering them some so what I ended up buying was this instead of my normal Coke Zero. I don't know if you can see it. Diet Sam's Cola. And it's honestly not bad. It is not Coke Zero. There is nothing like Coke Zero. But even if I wasn't going to be a, um, a stickler about frugality, they didn't have any Coke Zero. They were all out of Coke Zero, which made me sad. I guess people are catching on to the Coke Zero trend. And I don't like Diet Coke. I, I have, I used to drink Diet Coke, but then when you drink Diet, you drink Coke Zero and it just kind of like, I don't know. Nothing else is the same after Coke Zero. And this is pretty close. Um, the Sam's Cola actually tastes the closest. And I drink Coke Zero because it tastes like real Coke. And that's just the reason why I drink it. And the Diet Sam's is the next closest. I don't, I never have had a Diet Pepsi. I don't like Diet Pepsi. I don't, I've had, well, I've had it, but I never have liked it. I don't, I don't like it. It tastes fake. It tastes like plastic. I'm a Coke girl. Coca-Cola classic. That caramel taste separates it from everything else. And I think Pepsi tastes like plastic. <laughs> so I drink Coke. And, um, earlier in the year, I stepped on a scale. I'm now I'm, I want everybody to visualize this. Okay. I'm five feet tall. Almost exactly. I'm five feet tall. So I am like crazy short. Um, I stepped on a scale and I weighed 175 pounds. Um, that was kind of a life changing moment for me that I realized how much weight I gained. 
um, over the years just based on how, you know, I have a rather sedentary lifestyle. I work from home at a desk. Um, I don't go to the gym, things like that. So I went into panic mode when I realized that I weighed 170 pounds. Um, and so I went, one of the first things I did was I went to Best Buy and I bought a Fitbit. Um, and I'm not wearing it right now, but you guys have seen me wear it in my other videos. Um, that's one of the best investments I've ever made in myself, is that Fitbit. I have the Fitbit Charge 2, and it keeps track of everything from your heart rate to um, how many steps you've taken. Um, it keeps track of your exercises and your workouts so that when you do go and work out, it will keep track of them for you. I think that's pretty neat. Um, so I got the Fitbit, and then I got downloaded the FitStar app, which is basically, it's a series of workouts that are tailored to you and what your goals are. So you choose what your goals are, mine was weight loss, right? And then you go into the app and you, they give you like an introductory workout, basically. So you do the introductory workout and you tell after every single exercise, so like you'll do jumping jacks and you'll do push-ups and you'll do, you know, all the normal things that you would do during a workout. And then after each exercise, they'll ask you to rate how hard that exercise was for you to complete. And then based on that, they will assign you a category for each different part of your body. And they're going to, they'll give you workouts uh, three or four a week based on your goals. It changes. And they'll give you workouts based on your unique abilities and what you can and can't do in an effort to help you try to get stronger. Um, so I did this and I started out with a gym membership. I actually did go to the gym. I, I bought a gym membership and I was doing FitStar. Um, and, you know, it was nice outside, so I was doing a lot of walking, uh, pokey hunting, if you guys play Pokemon Go, I was doing a lot of that. Well, now it's cold, so, you know, it's not not so much good weather for pokey hunting anymore. Um, but between that and changing my lifestyle and changing the way that I eat um, and making sure I'm trying to eat healthier, cutting out simple carbs, replacing them with complex carbs, that kind of thing, um, I'm now down to 145 pounds, so I've lost 30 pounds this year, and I'm so, so stoked. Um, and it's nice to see your effort really and truly pay off. When I got started working out and exercising, it was not easy. It was so hard for me. I would, like, do 10 jumping jacks and feel like I was going to die just because I was so overweight and so out of shape. Um, and now, you know, 145 pounds at 5 feet tall is still overweight. I'm not, I'm not even going to try to say it's not. My ideal weight is 118 pounds. So I do still have a ways to go. Um, but I'm happy at 145 pounds. I feel better at 145 pounds. I don't feel like, um, I don't feel winded. If I have to do something strenuous, like if I jog from the back door to the car to start it and warm it up, I don't feel like I'm going to die by the time I get back. I mean, you know. So I just felt like I would share that and let you guys know that. Um, and I'm wondering, too, if that doesn't have something to do with the reason why I felt more sick this year than in years past. Because even though exercise is good for you... When you start doing something to your body that you haven't done normally for a long time, there's like a period where your body has to acclimate to it, right? You can't just, you can't just, you know, be a sedentary couch potato and then go run a 5K the next day. That's not how things work. Um, and learning how to, well, basically training your body to be able to lift weights and work out and ride a bike and jog and things after being sedentary for so long it's stress for your body it's good stress but it's stress nonetheless and um so i'm thinking that making the movement from a sedentary lifestyle to a more active one and changes in the way i eat so my body's like deprived of the sugar that it used to have i'm thinking that might be the reason why um I'm sick more this year than I have been in years past.
Of course, I'm not 100% certain. I'm not a doctor, so I can't. Not even my doctor knows for sure. He's like, you know, there's just no way. There's no way of knowing. It could be. He's leaning toward it being um, the physical stress that I put my body under. Even though he's encouraged me to not stop. Um, like, like I said earlier, even he said, you know, your body will acclimate to it. Your body will get used to being this active all the time. And I only started in summer. So I started this um, in July, June or July, I think, is when I bought my Fitbit. And I've lost 30 pounds. It kind of bothers me now, though, because it's cold outside. And I don't get out and do as much as I used to. So I'm trying to make up for that. Um by watching my calories as much as I can and watching what kinds of calories I'm eating. So, like, last year at this time, one of my favorite foods is, yes, and everyone on the, north, on the, on the uh, northeastern coast of the United States, I, I know this is going to start a fight, and I'm sorry, but I'm going to say it anyway. I love New England clam chowder, okay? Clam chowder is like, one of my most favorite things ever in history. It's like one of my favorite foods. It's also one of those foods that's just not good for you. Um, it's got a crap ton of cream in it. It's got white potatoes in it. The clams themselves aren't bad for you and they, there's actually health benefits to eating the clams, but there's not a whole lot of clams in them. The clams are there mostly just for flavor. Um, so it's mostly potatoes, cream, and clams. Um, and so this, usually this time of year, I'd be, you know, scarfing down some New England clam chowder and love and life, you know, comfort food. I can't do that this year because of the changes that I've made to my diet. So, um, any of you New England people out there who are clam chowder lovers, if you have any, like, lower calorie, healthier clam chowder recipes, um, I'm your girl. Please let me know. Send me an email or something so I can go check it out. I'm, like, seriously missing clam chowder so bad right now. I can't even see straight. <laughs> I need some clam chowder in my life. I was just saying something. My hair stuck to my pencil. I was just saying something about clam chowder the other day to my family. I'm like, oh, I want some clam chowder. And I'm the only one who likes it. The only one. Me and my daughter are the only ones in my whole family, my oldest daughter and me, are the only ones who will even eat fish. Any kind of fish. My boyfriend will eat seafood. He'll eat things like lobster and, and shrimp. Um, but he doesn't like scallops and he doesn't like fish. So. My son doesn't like fish. My daughter will eat fish, but my daughter is like... My daughter's almost 16 and she wants to be a vegetarian. Not vegan. She doesn't want to be vegan. She wants to be vegetarian. But, sorry for the sniffles, guys. But the problem with that is that she won't eat enough protein otherwise. So I can't let her be vegan or vegetarian. Um, and I've done a lot of research. So for those of you who are vegetarian or vegan and who are listening to me talk about this, I don't want you guys to, to bombard me and say, it's her choice. I'm aware that it's her choice. Um, I've done a lot of research, um, and I have gotten actively involved in trying to help her go vegetarian in a healthy way. Um, I went so far as to go and buy, um, basically wheat gluten flour to make something called Saitan. So maybe it's like, um, 100% wheat gluten and you put it together in a loaf and you cook it and it's supposed to be a high protein alternative to meat for people who are uh, vegetarian. So I went and bought some of this stuff, and I went through all the trouble to make it. The first batch didn't turn out right, so I had to call some friends up and get some advice. The second batch turned out exactly like it was supposed to. And I was really happy about that, because I'm like, oh, well, finally, now my vegetarian daughter will eat some protein. And she didn't like it. She wouldn't touch it. It just sat. She wouldn't eat tofu. She wouldn't eat um, most of the meat alternative products made by a company called Corn. She wouldn't eat those. Um, she just wasn't eating protein, period. She wasn't getting any. And because she's growing, because she's not an adult yet, and because she's growing, I, eventually there came a point where I was like, we can't do this anymore, Cassie. You're going to have to eat meat. You're just going to have to do it until you come to a point where you, um, are willing to eat these other pr protein alternatives 
she liked the taste of meat more than she liked the taste of the protein alternatives and she had to have the protein there was just no denying it she had to have it so mean mom me made her um made her stop being vegetarian and she's still not real happy with me about it but you know i understand that at 16 years old kids should have their their beliefs and you should I should let her have her beliefs I should let her do what she wants to do within reason however when her health is at stake because she's not eating any of the things that your typical vegetarian would eat to replace the protein that he or she is not getting well then you kind of have a problem you know what I mean then it's a matter of well it's your child's health so yeah so I don't know um, and, you know, she likes beans, and she likes peanuts, and she likes peanut butter, but that's just not enough in, in all, the amount of beans and peanuts and stuff that she would have to eat in a day to get her daily protein requirement, to get even, like, most of her daily protein requirement is just, it's insane. So, if anybody has any ideas out there as to high-protein vegetarian foods that she would like, uh, we do know about Greek yogurt. Um, Greek yogurt is one of her favorites. Um, and I do keep that in the house for her as, a, as an alternative to, um, to, to like some of the meat products. Like if I make pork chops or something for dinner and she doesn't feel like eating them, then she'll have the vegetables that I make to go along with it and then some Greek yogurt. And even then that makes me feel bad because there's not anywhere near the same amount of protein in that Greek yogurt as there's going to be in the pork. So... But I do allow it sometimes, and she loves eggs. Um, we hard boil eggs by the dozen, so she does love eggs. Um, like I said, I'm looking for other alternatives, things like seitan, tofu, um, alternatives that are very high in protein that you can consider real true meat alternatives, and she doesn't like either of those. So, Like I said, until she's willing to start eating things like that, um, we're going to have to lay off the vegetarian train. I do kind of like this, guys. I mean, and like I said, I, I don't know how to color fabric. And I'm just pulling some of this out of my, you know, just out of the hat. Because I don't know what some of this is. I don't know how to shade this. Um, I do flowers and landscapes mostly. So this is outside my comfort zone a little bit, too. I hope you guys are enjoying it. I'm so glad Jen's back on YouTube. <laughs> Jen, if you're watching this video, and I know that sometimes you do get around to watching them and sometimes you don't, I'm so happy you're back on YouTube, even though you did say that you're not going to be able to um, to put out a whole lot of new content and go back to your regular, you know, regular programming won't resume until after the first of the year. I'm just really happy to see your face and hear your voice. You get used to watching people on YouTube, on ColorTube, and, and you guys, you know, I do this, I, I am a YouTuber, um, but I was right there with you guys, and I still am, I mean, my favorite thing to do, aside from coloring, is watch YouTube, um, and when my favorite people that I have watched since the beginning of my journey, um, disappear, and they're not there, and they're not putting out new content, I get lonely, I get sad, I get to the point where I miss them, I want them to come back. Like, if Anne from A Colorful Life is gone for two days, I start freaking out. I'm like, come back. You can ask her. I posted on the fa on her Facebook wall before she opened her group. I'm like, you have got to come back and give us some content. We're going into withdrawals here. I'm not kidding. I did that. So, I'm right there with you guys. Um, I'm trying to come up for the new year. Sorry, guys. Sniffles. I'm trying to come up with um, a New Year's resolution of a timeline for my YouTube channel um, and for my job. I work from home and people unfortunately like to pretend that because I work from home I can do anything I want whenever I want and the rules don't apply to me. And 
as much as I wish this were really the case, it's absolutely not. Um, I have deadlines, I have clients to make happy, um, I can't just do what I want when I want. Can I decide I'm taking today off to, to get things on YouTube caught up and make some videos? I absolutely can do that. But if I do, that just means I'm going to be working twice as hard the next day, trying to get everything caught up that I didn't do the day before. So, alright guys, I am going to pause the video and blow my nose. Alright, that is very much better. I hate it this come down to this. I really, really do. That I have to, like, stop recording to go get a tissue because my nose is all stuffy. And it'll be, like, five minutes and it's just going to do it again. But, um... I don't feel that bad. It's just that my nose is all stuffy, so. Whatever, I'm still going to record the video. We're still going to color and chat. Oh, so I have a funny story for you guys. Um, I, it's, it's a good one. But before I tell it, um, if you guys are still watching and you're still into this or whatever, I probably should have said it at the beginning of the video because it's not going to make a lot of sense to say it now, but um, every Sunday I do what's called Sunday Fun Day, and that's basically where I just color and talk. Um, sometimes I plan what I'm going to color. Sometimes I'll do, like, answer questions for a Q&A. Sometimes I'll um, take a poll and ask people what they want to see me color. Sometimes, like this time, I'll just color what I want. But it is a color and chat session. It's not a tutorial, it's not a color along, nothing of the sort. Um, I know there are some people out there who do not like the color in chats. And who would rather just watch me color um, and something to that effect. And if that's the case, then you do have some options. Um, you can either skip the Sunday Fun Day videos because they are the most talky, the most gabby of all of them. Or you can watch them while you color and just mute me. That's what I have to do when I watch, like, uh, Julie's Passion for Coloring and Chris Chang. Um, they, don't, they don't talk anyway, but they play music when they color, and they put it on loop. And it, like, especially for their longer videos, they're like an hour or so long. If I have to listen to the same music on loop for that long, I, I'm going to go for a loop. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So feel free to mute me, or you just, you know, remember that my Sunday Fun Day videos are are kind of long color and checks. They're usually an hour or so long, sometimes longer, depending on what all I have to talk about. Um, so if you're someone who's not a fan of that type of video from Color Tube, just keep that in mind. And I always put Sunday Fun Day in the title, so you'll know that's what it is. And you can skip over that video. And for those of you who do enjoy the color and chats, thank you for sticking around. Thank you for watching and joining me today. It really does, for me, feel like I'm coloring with friends. Because um, I get to sit here and talk to you guys about, um, you know, what's going on in my life. And the things that have happened for the week. And what's going on in the Facebook group. And things that people are talking about in the coloring community. And I work from home. So, you know, whereas most people go to work every day and they get, you know, at least some social interaction with their coworkers. I don't have that. Um... I deal with teenage children all day, and other than that, all my interactions happen via email, so I don't get to do a lot of talking, to be fair. And I think that's why this kind of video is such a good fit for me, because I feel like I, you know, you guys are all my friends, um, we're all friends, and I feel like this is my opportunity to just kind of talk and let everybody know what's been happening in my life. So with that being said, I did say I had something funny to tell you, and I do, and it is kind of funny. Um, I, and I know that I just went on this big talk about how I've changed my lifestyle and how I eat better and things like that. So <laughs> I like peanut butter M&Ms. I have a weakness for peanut butter M&Ms, um, and I'll buy a bag every so often, and I'll munch on a few a day or whatever, because it's like one of my most favorite things. It's my favorite treat when I'm going to have a treat. So, um, I went to Walmart the other day, and I don't know how your all's Walmarts are, but in mine, right now, you go inside, and all the Christmas candy is, like, right by the door. So, you, like, walk in, and you go into the grocery side, um, and all the Christmas candy is, like, lined up in a row in boxes. So, 
um, I strolled over to the candy because I was out of peanut butter M&M's. And I looked for the red bag of M&M's because everybody knows that the peanut butter M&M's come in the red bag. If you're a peanut butter M&M's fan, then you know that. So I picked up my bag of peanut butter M&M's and put them in the cart. Um, I finished up my shopping and then we came home to make dinner. Um, and so I made my dinner. I forget what I even made that night. I made dinner. I cleaned up. I took care of everything. Um, I came and sat down and got ready to color and I was like, oh, I want some M&M's. So I went to get my bag of M&M's and I'll show them to you. Here they are, right? And I've had this for a while now, so. And they're in the red bag, but I want you to look at it. They're the red and green Christmas M&M's. They're not peanut butter M&M's, guys. I feel duped. I feel like the company has like betrayed my trust in them it's a red bag it's supposed to be peanut butter m&ms in there not these either way i'm gonna eat them but still if you're a peanut butter m&ms fan be on the lookout don't get duped like i did they need to put like warning labels or something on the boxes of candy when you walk into Walmart. Warning, this candy is deceptive. Make sure you're buying what you think you're buying. I was honestly not happy about it. For a little bit, I was genuinely upset. I even went on my personal Facebook wall um, and told the story and I was like, you know, I'm, I'm kind of irritated right now because it's supposed to be peanut butter M&M's that come in the red bag and not the Christmas M&M's. And so I feel like they need to put their Christmas M&M's in a different color bag. And I got laugh reactions. I'm like, why are you people laughing at me? <laughs> Either way, mmm, chocolate. So, I mean, the way I see it, even if you're on a mission to uh, improve your health and change your lifestyle and lose weight and whatnot, you can't completely deprive yourself. You just can't. Um, M&Ms are like my, my weakness. And my other favorite thing in the universe is cheesecake. Now, cheesecake I will skip for the most part because if I, if I get cheesecake, somebody buys me a cheesecake, I'll eat the whole thing. In like two days um, cheesecake is like my drug of choice and I know that's probably a really really bad analogy but it's the truth um, so I choose not to buy cheesecake or make cheesecake uh, people have given me cheesecake as a gift and um, in that case I will cut my cheesecake into quarters when I get it if I get one as a gift and I will put it into four separate containers and I will label everybody's, all my kids' names on them. And I'll be like, this, this is for you guys. Y'all need to help me eat this so I don't eat the whole thing. And because it's, in the, it, because it's in separate containers with somebody's name on it, it's like, you know, being at work in the break room refrigerator. You know better than to touch it. So. <laughs> it does help somewhat when I do things that way. So yeah, cheesecake and peanut butter M&M's. I wish that, you know, it was possible for me to ask for like M&M's vouchers for Christmas. Because that's what I would ask for, cheesecake and M&M's. I wouldn't ask for cheesecake. Um, I can control myself better with M&M's. <laughs> Go back over this one more time. I may take a blender pencil to this because this is nice and smooth paper. So I'm thinking if I take a blender pencil, because you can kind of see the lines where the colors are meeting up. And really, I mean, there's only so much I can do because the paper is so smooth. And I don't know why I printed it on this paper to start with. I should have printed it on my on my Bristol cardstock. Or my uh, Bristol vellum cardstock. But for whatever reason, I did not. So because we've outgrown our house over the last couple years, we chose not to put up our big Christmas tree. 
and I know that some of you guys are probably sad about that. Um, we, I went to Walmart and I bought a three foot pre-lit tree just to have something in the living room, just to have something we can have to celebrate the holiday. Um, but here's, here's what happens for us on holidays anyway. My, um, my kid's dad, my boyfriend isn't my kid's dad, unfortunately. Uh, my kid's dad lives in Milwaukee. And I live in southern Indiana. So we are about uh, 10 hours away from their dad. And they don't get to see him very much. This, this is not my choice. I don't want to go too much into, into things. And I don't want to make anybody look bad or seem like a bad person or anything. But it was not my choice for him to be that far away. It was his. Um, he's the one who chose to move there. And so, you know, that's that's all on him. Um, but because the kids have to go to school and they can't, you know, they don't, we don't have the normal, uh, shared custody arrangement where, you know, they can just go see daddy on the weekends and hang out. Um, they are gone for all of their Christmas, all of their breaks from school. So they're, they're not here for Thanksgiving. They're not here for Christmas. Um, they're not here over the summer. They're always gone for the holidays. Um, and that's taken quite a bit of getting used to on my part. And am, am I required by law? Did a judge say I have to? No, I don't have to. If I decide that I want the kids home with me um, for a holiday, I can keep them here and, and nobody can say otherwise. Um, but I won't do that to them because they look forward to it. That's the only time they get to see their grandparents on that side of the family. And that's the only time they get to see their dad and their cousins and their aunts and their uncles. And, you know... My kids are great kids, so I don't want to deprive them of that. So my kids aren't here on the holidays anyway. Um, it's not like I feel like I'm doing them a huge disservice by not putting up a big tree. Um, they won't be here to see it anyway. So it doesn't make a whole lot of difference. But we do still celebrate like on Christmas my boyfriend and I will usually um what we will normally do is we'll have like a romantic dinner for two and uh, we'll just cuddle and under the warm blanket and we'll watch Christmas movies and um that kind of thing I think last year I baked a giant turkey just for the two of us because I had a turkey <laughs> and I wanted a turkey so I think last year I just made us a bale turkey my Christmas present from him last year was my diamond ring here. Um, my Christmas present from him this year was my uh, polychromos, which was just unbelievable. Um, he wants a bow and arrow. He wants to go, he wants like a, a bow. He wants to go hunting. So um, I'm trying to figure something out because I don't know the first thing about buying them. I think what I might do is, like, I knew I was getting the polychromos for Christmas. I knew I was, because he asked me, um, we had, he had a budget, and he asked me what I wanted that would fit that budget, and so I went under budget and told him what I wanted. At the time, the Pablos were slightly over the budget, and they are still going up. They're still more expensive than they were when I first put them in my cart. Um, I probably could have asked for them, but I didn't want to. We don't, we don't have a lot of money. We're not... Um, we do good to get by sometimes, so I'm very fortunate for the things that I do have, um, and I'm very thankful for the things that I have, and I'm very, very grateful for the gifts that I have received and the things that I am able to buy, um, and I'm very, very grateful for any gifts that you guys have sent to me, and you guys have been so, so generous since I started this. There, there's many things I wouldn't have if it wasn't for you guys. So, I do want to thank you for that. Which is another reason why I don't mind giving you my time. You guys are you guys don't mind giving either. Um, you've made that very clear. Giving is um, what you guys do. So, you know, I don't I don't have uh, the funds to, you know, come and send all you guys on vacation or anything. But what I can do is make videos for you and talk and. Um, give you my advice and try to help you with your coloring and things of that nature if you want it.
this section went a little too dark. I wonder if my blender pencil can fix this some. If not, like I said, I'm not worried about it. This is more or less just trial and error anyway with these pencils, so. I'm gonna get my blender pencil sharpened. We'll see what happens. I don't think it's doing much for these pencils. It's just kind of scratching at them. Let's try. I personally think this one works better with my polychromos. This is the Lyra Splendor Blender, or Lyra, or however you happen to say it. Um, it's a lot harder than the Prismacolor Blender, um, and it's because the Lyra are oil-based pencil, I'm assuming that the blender is too. I don't know a whole lot about it, and I haven't really done the research to find out. Um, but, just out of curiosity, Yeah, see, I think this blender moves this pigment more than, um, more than the Prismacolor one does, which is odd. And the Prismacolor one will work with the Polychromos. I don't want you to think that it doesn't. Um, but instead of, like, actually blending the colors, the Prismacolor blender just pushes the color down on the paper, more like a burnisher. Um, the Lyra, when you use this Splendor Blender with the Polychromos, it actually helps m to blend the colors together. If, granted that you have enough layers down in, on the paper to start with, it'll help you blend those colors together. Alright guys, we're almost done with our dress, and I think that's why I'm going to call it quits, because um, I have to take these Yahoos to their dance in about 30 minutes. And it's 20 degrees outside, so I do need to go start the car and let it warm up some before... Um, I freeze my butt off in it, so. I keep reading all these articles about how it's bad to warm up your car before you drive it. Have you guys seen this? They said it's bad for your car and it just wastes gas to warm it up before you drive it. That seems silly to me because your oil in the wintertime, like your, you, you guys know this, I'm sure, but the oil that floats around your engine when it's cold, it's like sludgy, it's thick, and when it's hot, when it's warm, it flows better. So it seems to me that if you go and take off in your car, when your oil is still cold and slushing around in your engine, it can't be good for your engine. <laughs> and that just seems like common sense to me. I mean, I could be very wrong, don't get me wrong, I've been wrong before and I'll be wrong again. But it just doesn't seem right. It seems backwards. It seems like you'd want to warm up your car a little bit and get your oil moving around before you take off. I don't know. Just all these things that I hear. And of course, then again, you know, it's one of those, I probably saw it on Facebook things and you can't believe everything you see. This is giving me like an oil painted look. What do you, don't you guys agree? It looks almost like oil paint to a degree. I'm going to darken this side up a little more because it's a lot brighter than this one. But I'll get to that. And I'm struggling with these pencils to use a light enough touch to get... And I have pretty good control. I have pretty good control over my hands and how much pressure I'm using, but um, it's hard to, like if the pigment, if the pencil is touching the paper at all, there's going to be a lot of pigment coming off, and that's just how it is. There's very little that I can do to control it. Alright, I need to do the front panel of her dress too. Um, what I'm thinking I'm going to do is just leave it the bright yellow, I think. I don't think I'm going to put as much shading and stuff in there. I wonder if I go over this again, if it'll darken it up and make it more flame-like. Maybe a little bit it is. 
I'm just I'm just going in with a hard pressure now and going over everything. I'm trying to darken it up just a smidge. I want to print something on my vellum surface paper and see how it works. Yeah, that's better. That matches better. All right, guys, I think this is where I'm going to go ahead and stop for the night. Um, it's been an interesting day, to say the least, and I, I do apologize that the video got, you know, broken up into 16 clips, but, um, you know, again, that's just a testament that it is real life. Um, you know, I do try to fit these things in around everything else, and just like you guys, things go crazy and things are busy, and um, I do, I am glad that I've got the Sunday Fun Day recorded, and I can go ahead and get it uploaded to YouTube and have it to where it'll go live tomorrow morning. Um, I've been feeling pretty guilty the last few weeks that Sunday fun day hasn't been going up until, you know, 10 or 11 o'clock at night. So, um, it does make me happy that this one will be up earlier for you guys so that you all can enjoy it while you're coloring. Um, if you all have any ideas for anything that you want to do, um, that would make Sunday fun day more interesting, you know, feel free to put them in the Facebook group or leave a comment below. Um, I absolutely do not mind some suggestions. I did want to do a Q&A, but I kind of forgot to put it up early enough to make it happen. Um, so we'll do that again maybe next week. Alright, for those of you who are new to my channel, thank you for watching this long and sticking around till the end. I hope you decide to subscribe and come back and watch again um, next week and then all the little videos I do in between. If you have not subscribed yet, please go ahead and do so. Hit the little bell so you'll be notified when a new video is ready for you. And give this video a big fat thumbs up. Uh, don't forget that the links to everything I've used in this uh, tutorial, not tutorial, tutorial. The links to everything I've used here are going to be downstairs in the description box if you want to find them. The coloring book, which is uh, Unicorn by Jade Summer and the Black Widow and the Scorpion Pencils and the Eraser and the Blenders and all that good stuff. You'll find it all down in the description box below. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. I hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend.